This is a highly visible project. Obviously, anytime you touch Kyle Field, it's it's really sacred ground here. So we want to do it the right way. So we waited on this to do it right before the season. That way, people had full visibility as they walk into Kyle Field this year. And then we'll contact the season ticket holders and make sure they have all the information. But highly visible, highly impactful. And it's just a new kind of a new era because Kyle Field, we haven't touched it since it was redeveloped. So this is a big moment to, to get this off the ground and just have visibility for our, you know, for the Aggie Network. Ross, I heard about the sections. I didn't hear an exact number of the suites. Do you have to know that? Where's that diagram? Is, that, is it written over there somewhere? Yeah, 20, 23 is okay. the number of suites. And uh, it'll impact about uh, 400 account holders, a little less than 2,000 seats. We're actually going to be able to maintain the capacity of Kyle Field where it is today okay. with some other standing room only. We're going to add some seats in some different sections. So we're not going to lose ground from that perspective. We're going to make sure that this is the largest stadium in Texas, the largest stadium in the SEC. We want to maintain that. And so we're able to do some creative things um, around that. Could you tell us a little bit about the suites? Well, it's just a, it's a dynamic view. Um, if, you, if you really look at the north end zone, those suites have a very similar view to what these new suites will have in the south end zone. And we want them to, to be modern. We want them to be efficient. Um, but I, the really big benefit, I think, is the sight line. If you look at where they are, you're going to be right on top of the action. You're going to be able to really watch our team run out of the tunnel and see all the pageantry and the Fighting Texas Aggie band. And so the sight lines, I think, will be the most marquee thing about these suites. You mentioned the, the demand. What was the demand prior uh, to, to People, get those seats? People, every year, our 12th Man Foundation staff, they, they come back and they're like, we've got five people, 10 people, 20 people. Uh, all of our major gift officers have people that contact them and say, what do I need to do to get a suite? Well, we're sold out. We have very little turnover, if any, in our current suite market. And so that demand was built up and just kind of a pent up uh, demand from our donors saying, I want to buy a suite. What can I do? And so just over time, and as we looked at our campaign, as we looked at our other facilities, <laughs> being able to fund everything. This was another revenue source, not only an annual revenue, but also one-time gifts. And so it just added sort of fuel to our, our capital campaign. How much money do you expect to make per, per year? We're, uh, we're targeting 20 to 25 million in one-time revenue, and then uh, right around 2 million in additional revenue on an annual basis. I don't know if you know the specifics on this or not, but as far as um, corporate uh, individual families looking at yeah. Our 12th Man Foundation staff is going through the prospect list right now and figuring out who's ready to sign contracts, who's ready to make a commitment, those sort of things. So it's hard to say whether they're corporate individuals, families. I know the redevelopment predates your time here, but yeah. was was adding in suites in this end zone part of that conversation before, or has you know, this been a new thing? I think there was always conversation about the south end zone and what could you do. You have a big concourse on this level, right. but you also had that overhang, so I think it was always part of the discussion. But obviously at that time, it was built the way it was built. Again, best stadium in the country, and this is an add-on feature. Ross, the Cincinnati Project, is, you see all these all these projects kind yeah. of move forward and closer to completion. Are you finding with fundraising that that sort of like the vision kind of makes it even easier and easier as you go along? Yeah, I mean, we, we did a feasibility study of our donors, and we asked, we asked our top 35 donors, hey, how do you view the projects in kind of in priority order? And this is what they told us. Indoor football, academics, bright building, new, new premium seating was a priority, and then obviously a relocation of our indoor track. You know, if we're going to put football where we're putting indoor football, we need to rebuild track. And so we made that a priority. But the feedback came from our donors. And so the momentum was kind of created by them, if you will. And that's the great thing. Again, we talked about the 12th Man Foundation and the culture of giving. That's the great thing about where we sit is our, our donors show us a plan, show us a vision, and typically they, they come through. Where uh, volleyball started, soccer started, few yeah. days away from football, golf not far away, just uh, your excitement level for you. Just, you know, it's a new year. And that's the great thing about college sports is every year you have this pent up energy, this excitement, new teams, new rosters, new coaches that we have. So, you know, last night, you know, scored a lot of goals on the Sunday, scored a lot of goals last night. I know G's excited about his team, a lot of athleticism, <laughs> volleyball, new team. And so we don't know what to expect. Bird's excited. But obviously, lots of excitement about football and just can't wait to kick it off.
eight that? days from now. Is it a good sign for you for athletic department health to see that not only in the NIL era that you can raise the money for these kinds of projects as well? Absolutely. You know, people people are going to give where they want to give, right? It's their money, and our job is to just encourage them. Hey, give what you can, whatever bucket that's in. If you want to give to NIL, great. If you want to give to capital campaigns and annual fundraising or sponsorship. That's our message is we want to be a part of all of it. And so we want to be at the cutting edge. NIL is going to evolve. What's it look like a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? We don't know that answer, but I know that Aggies want to win. They want to be a part of it. And so it's our job to, to facilitate everything. With athletics facilities kind of being an arms race at all times, uh, especially yeah. particularly with football, how important is it to stay ahead of the curve in that? constant evolving, right? I mean, everybody's building something. Everybody's got a cutting edge facility. You know, Alabama's opened a new facility recently. Georgia just opened a new facility. If we want to be in that rarefied air of the elite of college football, college athletics, you've got to stay ahead and you've got to do things like this. Players still want to be coached. They want to have the meeting rooms. They want to have the player development facilities. You've got to have nutrition, recovery. Players want that. And so we want to make sure that we, we have all the resources to compete for sure. All right, I cover it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. thanks.